morning everyone and good afternoon to the other ones so this is the second session today already it's a Sunday here in Germany and it's very very windy so in case that uh, you're not understanding some commands don't worry because afterwards we are going to have some question and answer sessions but for right now let's start with the practice and watch with the eyes and maybe you can also try to read from my lips if the wind is too strong. Let's go. Inhale, open the chest. During the inhalation, heels up and down. One. Until here and afterwards exhale and push. Then release the arm. So inhale and exhale, push. And release the arms. Inhale. Push.
seven. Six times, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. shoulders backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Shake off the hands like they would be wet. Shake off, shake off while jumping. Yeah, relax. Okay. 
then now we continue with the spine rotation watch the movement first and especially pay attention to your knees Keep the arms in, just lift the elbows lightly up. And swing from side to side. Your spine, uh, keep it straight. And go 36 times. One. Continue with the same movement, but our arms are getting wider now. Continue with the movement. So during the inhalation, you bring your arms, your hands and the fingers straight up. So look, at the end of the movement, so when the body is completely straight, when you're at the highest point, also watch your fingers, pay attention to the fingers that you also straighten them. Yeah? They are like, boom, shooting up at the end of the inhalation once you have this tension point um, then you can release and let go so let's do this exercise together again we make it a little bit more slow then realize that it's very so anyway 
let's continue and let's do 18 times together again a little bit more slow and pay attention that for yourself you realize the difference between okay now my body is soft now my body is tense and at the end of the movement it's tense Okay, now another movement right now, we are inhaling in to the chest area, yeah, we're inhaling into the chest area and then exhale and push, inhale. Push. One. Turn the hands and push. Two. Inhale. Turn the hands and exhale. Push. One. Turn the hands. Push. Two, turn the hands, push, three, inhale, turn the hands and push.
minute jumping. We are decently warm, so let's continue with the exercise that yesterday we introduced for the first time. But we take it step by step. So right now, watch this movement. Your arms, your legs and also your breath. Try to harmonize all of them, so bring them together inside this movement. Uh, just watch. Yeah, watch first. One leg stand strong. Huh? Other leg light. Light. Arms, leg. One. join in right now the weight is on the right right leg now I shift back now it's on the left Two. 
Oh. And down. Shift to the back leg. Yeah, left leg. See, it has no weight. Then up. Okay, so one. a new movement but actually it's a little bit more simple than the one yesterday so just to bring it together again it is important to learn and pay some attention where is your weight distributed because we normally practice also in the different types of walking meditation that you try not to have or to lift any leg as long as there is still any weight um, resting on it so that means to know when do you need to to shift the weight and when is the right time to lift the leg you must listen to your own body you must listen into yourself and this is the reason why in this exercise it is not just a question about down and up balance so in regards to standing firmly and lifting one leg up it's also a question about when is the time to shift the weight from the front leg to the back leg so let's do this movement again and pay some more attention now pay attention to the details anyway I will upload this video therefore it's not possible to make it the first time right but already try to observe yourself and try to find a way so right now weight is on the right leg as so you see there always learn and rock your body front and back front and back and to test yourself if it is correct once you have shifted all the weight all the weight on one leg 
then you test and lift the other one so let's continue 18 times now that we have some exercise to understand how it is with the weight distribution of our body in regards to our legs now at what time does the front knee start to lift up it is at that moment when you are sure that that leg is not connected to the ground anymore then you lift it up so all the weight shifted to the back leg first and when the front leg has no weight anymore then we lift it up at the same time the arms we can just use the arms um, the arms as a support as a support so arms go up arms go up leg goes up yeah so
one more time six so same goes now for the other side so let's start the rocking first yeah on the front leg back leg So this was a, another exercise where you see where there are so many different aspects once again how you can take this exercise out and just work on it. Take yourself some time, practice it slow and give that exercise, give it a purpose. And this one for example, make sure that you are learning what is full and what is empty. Yeah, what is full and what is empty other exercises that we did today already you can ask when is soft and when is tense yeah, when is it moving and when is it immovable so okay now yesterday we introduced uh, we introduced uh, this one uh, and down Sense of balance for sure goes on all the 
exercises where you're standing on one leg but for right now let's spend some time only on the upward movement so what the arms and the chest uh, are doing so look um, inhale exhale inhale and exhale one two so this front movement it's like grabbing grabbing but also turning the wrist at the same time so yeah, one hand is in the back one hand is in the front and this front hand if we want to switch the side yeah, the front hand grabs and turns at the same time until it's a closed fist now this one we pull back this one we bring to the front but not um, not as two separate movements so look when you're here not like this yeah, because we can make it much more easy when our sense of attention is placed on the right spot and the right spot for example is when you take the spine that's why the sp <laughs> that's why the spine is so important because once you have your spine centered yeah and then you go from here one now i'm on the mile so this yeah watch for example right now watch my spine i try not to move so much but yeah. so all the turning all the transition of uh, of, of force all the transition of energy or however you call it happens because you have this reference point which is always standing at one location and because it's standing still I can observe it better if it's moving it's difficult then you must be a really good observer to um, to catch something moving so fast yeah okay so one two one one, two, 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 one, two. Okay, relax a moment. So, and you don't even need to put too much power or too much effort right now into this push. But it's to, it should still be a push. So, um, yeah, make it as a push. But that's also again the balance if you make everything too stiff yeah, let me show you if you're too stiff yeah. okay mm. uh, it's very difficult it's very difficult to create this harmony if you do not allow your body to express itself the body must learn to express itself and this is why to learn and it must not be fast Ja, 
Yeah, so sometimes, uh, sometimes it's difficult to understand that uh, in the in the Asian martial arts, especially in the Chinese martial arts, sometimes things are expressed too too bloomingly and too philosophically. So it has nothing to do with any physics, with anything that you can prove. But no, it's wrong. It's like it's like one plus one. Yeah, you always get two. One plus one, you always get two. And the same goes for if you treat the body and understand the mechanism of your body. The more better you understand it, then it is similar like this. You add the one, you add structure together with your torsional abilities. And this structure plus the torsion, it's going to equal something. And this something is not philosophical. This something is very real when somebody touch you with such a with such a palm, yeah. So this is why yeah, you need to learn. It's the balance. <laughs> it's the balance. Okay. So the upper body movement. Yeah. See also here, spine is straight, but the arms. Seven. Down. Breath. Eight. Very good. So today I showed you a few exercises more where you can train your sense uh, for balance because this balance or this ability that you can observe yourself how does it look on my inside? How does it look on my inside? What do I need to do in order to adjust? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, right, the talking part is later. So, let's do some more 
some more exercises for the legs. So now we use the Gong Wu, the arrow stance, in order to stretch open, stretch open our front side and also the front side of the body and the front side on our back leg. Yeah. So the back leg. Yeah. So for example, I would really suggest that if you make this type of training for yourself the last five minutes is absolutely okay if you mix up together different exercises and make you feel happy. Make you feel happy means yeah, use all the exercises, mix some co com combination for you, yeah, but feel. The important part is you don't think about them anymore in the final five minutes. You just do them. You just do them. Feel them. Yeah, feel how it feels. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, da, da, marble. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, 
one more minute. suggest we are taking a five minute break so maybe some of you can now start to prepare the first coffee and some of you can make some tea and we will meet back again in in five minutes in five to ten minutes and then I will be there looking for a location where there's not so much wind and we can just have some small chat and I will be answering a few questions that you'll be having so but for right now just um, see you in 10 minutes again. Hello everyone and welcome back. So <laughs> I found a safe spot I think but we'll see. So, um, ah, anyway, I somehow forgot to mention where you can actually post your questions. And so I think right now just send them somehow to me through those direct messages and I will just read over it and we see where we are getting from here. is how can I stop bad habits how can I stop bad habits and in many ways I think this is a quite important question and just as a guideline there is a nice saying 
it goes what's your thoughts because they will become your words what's your words because they will become your actions what's your actions because they will become your habit what's your habit because they will become your character and what's your character because it will become your destiny so along this line of, of uh, along this line of cause and effect you realize that the starting point is the thoughts and right before habits is standing the action so whatever habit you are trying to get rid of all of these habits are made out of individual actions the individual actions that you might be having on a regular basis and that are consistently coming over and over again so therefore how do you start with the bad habits you stop the actions you start and reduce the actions that are responsible for this bad habits to um, to arise and how do you start uh, stop the bad actions there you start by watching what you're talking all day long and also what's going on in the mind yes Yes, why am I not using a microphone uh, until now? Actually, it was working pretty fine. Many people told me already that the sound of the wind sometimes can be very disturbing. But I think in all the uploaded videos, um, it's still okay. Because you shouldn't care too much about the wind and care more about your movements, your actions. And ultimately when it comes to words because maybe this is what you're looking for to have words that I can uh, speak more and you understand what I'm talking but um, sometimes it really really helps and this is how for example myself also in the past uh, was being trained sometimes the master my master was not talking a lot even that he knew that I would actually be waiting for some explanations. Why? Because the curiosity that you are having. Curiosity. And to always ask yourself, but how is he doing this? And what is he paying attention on? This is also a very, very important aspect. A very important ingredient when it comes to your development whatever area that is the curiosity to always be in that state of asking because if you ask you're gonna get the answers but if I talk too much and you have the feeling that you already have your answers then you will stop questioning and this is not um, is it's not helpful it's not helpful to a certain extent so in all the rotational movements that we did in this weekend uh, I mostly explained about the back leg that you should uh, get a sense when is the right time to also turn a little bit on the on the palm of the of the foot now when is the right time to, um, to to turn but the same also goes for the front leg so once you start to make this exercise a little bit more slow and feel inside of yourself the more awareness you have built up the more you actually start to move and use the body how do you 
build up a good relationship to your body, you must spend more time with him. You must spend more time with your body. This is how you're building up a better relationship. The body talks to you and you can give comments to the body and eventually the body even will listen. So it's about building up a good relationship between us and our body. Now, once this body awareness reaches a certain level, then, then the body is going to talk to you. Now, not talking in that sense, but you will know, you will know which adjustments to do in order not to hurt or destroy anything on, on your body. So, and in that sense, yes, adjust your knees in all the different positions accordingly in such a way that you don't hurt yourself. Yeah, and this can mean that front leg and back leg, uh, depending on what type of exercise it is, sometimes they need to also turn. So, uh, maybe strange question for some people, but it actually is being asked quite often. In all the exercises or in, in all the training that we're doing, mostly I am wearing shoes, yes. But sometimes in other traditions, it's, uh, it's a teaching or maybe it is a suggestion to always stay very grounded to the earth and therefore train barefoot. Now, I really see it very, very simple. When I am doing the training, then it is not my purpose within this type of training right now to, um, to mentally or spiritually or however you call it to connect myself to the earth in that sense it is more that it is a martial art there are martial art movements so sometimes there will be some turnings and there will be some jumpings so for me to wear shoes means to protect the body but there are other times when the dangers the dangers of hurting the body are minimized so you do not need to worry about if you are going to uh, to to hurt it and then it's something different and then it can be a quite a nice experience and can also um, upraise some different qualities when you are really going back to times when with barefoot you maybe walk through uh, through some wet grass yes some of us maybe still know it when we were still young but meanwhile it didn't happen so often anymore but it's also something nice and once again it's about experience it's about experience and therefore when i do the training and i want to protect then this is what i do and when i want to connect and i want to have other experience then i do other things as well restore self-confidence self-love and for yourself how do you restore something that you maybe have the feeling at the moment it's not it's not there anymore now just from let's let's look at something from a different perspective There are two different approaches. Uh, I generalize a little bit right now, but I think you still get the point. There are two ways right now 
how we can look for getting satisfied there are two ways how we are trying to satisfy our hunger for whatever that hunger is and the first approach is that our life is constantly based on we need to do something in order to attain something first you need to do something in order to attain something but in the moment of the doing you are constantly already are in a state of lack the complete behavior everything the thoughts the words the actions oftentimes they are coming out from the sense of something is lacking that's why I need to do in order to get so constantly day in day out we wake up and always having this feeling of lack something is lacking so this is the first approach if you are constantly in the state of lack well then you will always need a substitute you will always look for something in order to fill this hole and in order to fill this gap and then as another approach there is nothing missing in the other approach it is said that you are already complete the way as you are you are exactly complete the way how you are the only problem is that there is something which is lying which is covering our view which is covering our eyes which is covering our self and that's why we cannot see ourselves we are in the impression that we are not complete so and why is it important to have these two different uh, approaches because the first approach always looks for the substitute somewhere around you somewhere from the outside you try to get it into your life and the second approach means you already have it the only thing you need to do the only thing you need to do is to uncover it to find a way and take out Put away what already is inside of you that is making your view become blurry no just very funnily today even though that our monastery is already closed since November last year because of the restrictions but people are still sometimes coming over for a short visit and So what is it that the Buddhist teaching is? Is it a religion or is it a, a way of life? Is it a philosophy? So the thing is like this. This year I think it's almost 33 years, no it's 34 years that somehow I am related to this way of life. So I started very very early but until today it has always played a, a big role in my life but even if i live right now in the shaolin temple europe even if i'm one of the highest representatives of this monastery right now so listen carefully i do not consider myself being religious because everything that i am trying to share here with you that i'm trying to share with visitors that are coming here the only thing that I do is to show you some to show you something and tell you and now you look for yourself look for yourself and then derive your
derive your answers for yourself. I'm not giving you answers. Yeah, I'm not here to give you answers in that sense. The only thing I can do is always to somewhere to point at something. And then you observe wherever um, I'm pointing at. And by observing for yourself, you take the decision if it makes any sense to integrate this type of thinking into your life. Now, just as an example, there is a saying that in this world, hate has never defeated hate. So, I don't know if you need to believe this or not. So, next time, wherever you are having a conflict with someone, try to solve this conflict when the other person screams at you by screaming back. Every time somebody like punch you, try to bring some peace into the situation by punching back. Somebody in your relationship is very very aggressive towards you and you try to solve the problem by being aggressive back. So, and now the question is, is it going to work? And here the Buddhist teachings, for example, say it's not going to work. Because hate does never defeat hate. Only love, only compassion, only understanding for the other one can solve the issue. That's the solution. And now for some people, all of this maybe sounds a little bit wishy-washy and whatever here whatever there it's too philosophical we are living in a world of conflict well if we're living in the world of conflict then you constantly have this in your mind then it is no wonder that we are living and that it is expressing itself in such a way we cannot expect from other people they should change but we don't change they should change first but we don't change this is not the way how it works Watch your words, then watch your actions, watch the habits, watch yourself, watch your destiny coming. So, um, yeah, not sure how we ended up actually with this answer, but the Buddhist teaching is not about believing, it is about learning to try and see how things are interrelated with each other. Everything's connected with each other. It matters very much who in this world right now is developing any type of vaccination. It matters for Germany because maybe then they can buy it somewhere cheaper or I don't know. Yeah. Now, oftentimes in the Shaolin arts, we talk about Kung Fu belongs a little bit more to the external styles. Qigong, Neigong, they belong more to the internal styles. So what should I practice? And in the six days morning sessions, in the six day morning practice, uh, it was still a little bit more soft than this weekend practices right now. So. Um, I think it's better to have both. It's better to integrate all the methods that we have access to in order to benefit ourselves. And it does have benefits if your frame, meaning your physical body, if your frame is a strong one. At the same time, we don't only have a frame, we maybe also have different types of engines. So which type of engine is better? Yeah, is, uh, is, uh, is a V2 better than a V8 or a V8 better than a V12? Yeah, I don't know. 
I am not sure if the question is about better, but they certainly have different vibes. Yeah, if you stand next to a V12, it has a different vibe. It feels differently. It is able to generate the force in a very different way than a small cylinder engine uh, would be possible to do. So, and in this sense, can I take a V12 engine and build it into a motorcycle frame? You certainly can, but it's beyond any, it just doesn't make sense. It's just impossible. It doesn't make sense. So, again here, to find the proper balance for yourself, because you are this frame and you are also responsible for which uh, engine do I put into this frame. This is your decision, how you want to walk through this lifetime. Yeah, you want to have a strong frame and a strong engine, well, that fits pretty good. And therefore, we need the external styles, we need the more physical aspects of the training. And at the same time, it also makes a lot, a lot of sense to also concentrate and place our attention on other, uh, other training methods. And for example, come from the Qigong or the internal arts. Ultimately, you anyway have both of them already. It's just about the quality of them. Everybody has internal aspects and everybody has external aspects. It's just about the quality of them. And this is what all of this is about, what the training is about, what the teachings are about, what all the sharings are about. Yeah. Okay, now I will take two more questions and then anyway in two weeks we are going to have another weekend practice. And in the meantime, maybe already tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, I'm going to upload all of the four sessions that we had this weekend for you. And you can then also decide what you're going to practice the next weekend. Yeah, how is the Buddhist practice integrated into the martial arts? Um, the core sentence, the starting point of Buddhism is with our thoughts we create the world. over the thoughts then you gain control over yourself by gaining control it becomes very possible to influence this life in such a way how you would like to live it but if your mind and if the thoughts are out of control you do not have a lot of influence in the quality of your life so how do we increase the quality of our thoughts we must pay attention to something which is very 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 fine and this aspect of refinement this is something that we are also finding for example in the practices of the martial arts because when you are starting in the beginning you maybe only realize that I have this this body the more you practice the deeper the penetration 
straight into your own body which means you will be able to discover your skeleton your muscle groups your organs and all other systems that are existing within our ourself the more fine you become with the body the higher your ability becomes to also translate this into the refinement of the mind and so this is one aspect where i see that the martial art practices and the buddhist practices can come along very very well for other areas they certainly don't because in the buddhist teaching it's very clearly stated don't harm any being do not harm any being now with what type of intention now are you walking out in this world so if you are practicing the martial arts with the purpose of going out there and harming a lot of people well first of all i think many masters that would know about this are not going to teach you but second of all this type of approach certainly has nothing to do with the with the buddhist way of thinking yeah yes so now one uh, final question Okay, a lot of statements but no questions. Yeah, okay. So the future is also for us. It's unwritten. It's not written the future. I don't know what is going to come in the future. So therefore, I am absolutely not worried about when are we going to reopen the monastery when are we allowed again to to have participants and visitors and guests coming to our place i'm not worried because i don't have influence on it it's not in my hands Once the time comes, I'm sure that somewhere you will know that our monastery is open again. And until then, so what's the solution until then? To practice more. To spend more time with the things that you have already directly next to you. Uh, sometimes we complain that we have so many things to do and we don't even know where to walk and go anymore so now this decision has been taken from you because we have uh, restrictions at what time to go out at what time to come home okay so already something you do not need to think about it anymore and therefore you can immerse yourself in other areas of life right now so this is not about always staying positive. It's not about staying positive. It's also not about staying negative. Make the best out of every situation where you are in. It doesn't matter in which situation you're in. You can be in a really, 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 really bad, bad, bad situation. But there are now two choices. No, actually it's not a choice, but it can seem like that you have two choices. Either you get up somehow and try to stand up to get out of this hole. This is the one possibility. And the second possibility is you just, yeah, in this way, give up. And, yeah. I don't know what other traditions would be teaching you but now I think 
the martial aspects start to come in again just don't give up keep going keep going and this is how i see it with all the circumstances that we're having right now here these are not easy times yeah but nobody said it's going to be easy so i have no option i have no other choice than to keep going and sometimes i'm in times where i have many many supporters and then to keep going is easier it goes faster it goes quicker and sometimes you find yourself being uh, being on your on your own but the choice there is no choice i still keep going and this is what um what i would like also to to share with you to think a little bit about this all of this must come from yourself you must be you must be that person that you would like to see more out there in the world don't look for other people to change first you change yourself to the better version to the best version and like this we take influence so okay in that sense uh, it's a very nice day and yeah i try to make the best out of it and some of you maybe know what this means so thank you all very much for joining this session today and in case that you haven't called your mother yet today is mother's day so uh, appreciate your mother appreciate your parents without them we would not be here all the best to you and see you one day again